right, so we're hunting the saffron milk cap in this pine forest. And this is a, a nice example here. Nestled under these pine leaves. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful examples of the saffron milk cap. So that's what you're looking out for, a little mound of pine needles. And underneath are these treasures. these beautiful tiny little saffron milk caps. At this stage when they're so small and they're really firm they're still good for pickling as well. The older varieties if you try and pickle them then they'll just fall apart and you'll end up with mushroom soup. If we pull away the pine needles look at this. Wonderful. Looks like there's another little dainty mushroom in there as well. Maybe a little mycena who knows. All right there we have it. So this is the stem of the mushroom here that I've just cut off and underneath here, well it's hard to see but the mycelium, the root system as such of the fungus, goes down through the soil and links in to the pine, pine tree roots. So these little white filaments grow through the soil like cottony threads. They're the, the root system as such of the fungus. Uh, they link in to the root system of the trees here. So they're mycorrhizal fungi. That means that they live in a symbiosis with the pine trees here. So the, the fungi link in with the root system of the pines and they in effect extend the root system of the pine tree so they can get the pines can gather more water more nutrients for uh, there's some estimates that for every one meter of a tree root there's about a kilometer of mycelium associated with that which just that surface area vastly improves the ability to um, get water nutrients and not only that uh, fungi are much more capable of uh, gathering nutrients, of getting hard to uh, scavenge elements such, such as phosphorus. Here are a few more specimens that I've got. These, this is great, they, they all look uh, pristine and ready for the eating. Um, this one's had a little bit of a nibble from a snail or a slug, but that's right, we don't mind sharing too much. Um, when you find a patch of uh, the lactarius, uh, you don't just go for the ones that are evident, but you look for little mounds, and as you look in the grass, like down here as well, you find little ones popping up everywhere. So once you find something, take the time to scan and poke around with a little stick, and you'll be rewarded by finding these, these great little ones. It's the telltale identification is that they're orange mushrooms in a pine forest. They um, will generally bleed a orange milky exudate and you can see how um, there's a little tiny bit of a greening reaction there, this oxidation that eventually if you if you break them then they'll first bleed this orange and then eventually that will oxidize to a green color. There's a little example down here of an older one on the ground where we can see that happening. You can see this older specimen here and that bluing reaction there. Beautiful example of a couple of these Ammonita muscaria, the fly agaric, the classic fairy tale mushroom. <laughs> Wonderful, they look beautiful. Now, around here, we've got a great example of the different life stages of Ammonita muscaria. Just over here, we've got a small one just coming up, poking through the pine needles. So, look at this one here, just poking up through the pine needles and all these white dots that once were the universal veil, the sack that covered this mushroom. Look at this, just poking its head up through the pine needles. Um, it's the button form of the 
Ammonita muscaria. And then later on here, we've got the more mature specimens. They look wonderful too. You can see the, uh, the annulus, the ring uh, around the stem, and the white dots on the red cap. Classic fairy tale mushroom. Now, a bit further over there, there are a few specimens where they've actually had their white dots washed off by the rain. So this could confuse uh, the amateur mycologist um, as to what species it is. Let's go have a look at them. Now we've had a, a decent dump of rain recently and you can see here this one has hardly any of these white dots left. They've all been washed off by the rain and this one as well. There's just one there. So you could be mistaken for thinking that's another species but that just goes to show that it's not only the, the morphological characteristics of uh, the individual mushroom, but also the environmental conditions that it's subjected to, whether it's the rain or drying out or even the, the life stage, how immature or mature it is. I and mean, look at these ones there, the colour's really changing. Um, and this is completely sodden with the rain. But they're great examples of the different life stages of Ammonita muscaria. Of Gymnopalus. Unfortunately, uh, not an edible mushroom, but look at that cluster. Great. <laughs> 